Chernobyl is the largest nuclear disaster in human history, preceded by the explosion of reactor number four at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This disaster contaminated millions of acres with toxic radioactive waste. This wasn't limited to the area immediately surrounding Chernobyl either. Dangerous levels of radiation were detected in Scandinavia, Northern Italy, Central Europe, and beyond. Evidence of the disaster was even detected in North America. The official death toll stands at just 31, but the true cost of those affected by Chernobyl could stretch into the millions. Hundreds of thousands of people were evacuated, and in their wake was left a large swath of uninhabitable land known as the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. In Belarus, this zone has been designated as the Polesi State Radioecological Reserve, and it is the subject of today's video. So I discovered this reserve while scouring Google Maps for parks because that's a thing that I do. And normally when I do this, I find your typical sorts of protected areas, national parks, biosphere reserves, wildlife refuges, etc. But never until now had I found a radio ecological reserve. In fact, to my knowledge, this is the only one of its kind in the world. And so my curiosity was piqued, and I decided to look into this radio ecological reserve for a video here on the channel, which you are watching right now. What I found was a very unique protected area indeed, one not born out of a guiding conservation philosophy or a desire to protect a uniquely special area, but one born out of tragedy. The Polesi State Radio Ecological Reserve was established in Belarus in 1988, two years after the Chernobyl disaster. It was established in the Belarusian portion of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, which had been evacuated after the disaster because the area was simply too contaminated, too saturated with radiation to support human habitation any longer. Belarus was one of the hardest hit countries of the Chernobyl disaster, with nearly two thirds of it suffering quote unquote, significant contamination. Within Belarus, within this area that's now a radio ecological reserve, 22,000 people from nearly 100 villages were evacuated from this area. And today, the reserve encompasses some 536,000 acres. Now, Technically, the reserve doesn't exist within the formal framework of Belarusian protected areas, like within their national parks and other conservation areas, at least not legally speaking. Functionally though, the Polesi State Radio Ecological Reserve carries the highest form of protection in Belarus, on par with what is called a Zapovednik. A Zapovednik is what's considered a strict nature reserve with tight controls over human use and an emphasis on nature preservation and scientific research. Of course, this area was never intended to be set aside as a nature reserve. I mean, without Chernobyl, it would have remained a highly productive agricultural area with lots of people living in it. But after Chernobyl, its primary function was basically as a buffer zone for the most highly contaminated areas of the disaster. But in practice, the Polesi State Radio Ecological Reserve has become a massive laboratory to see and study the effects of radiation on the natural environment and to observe what happens to that environment in the absence of humans. According to the Belarusian government, the primary function of the reserve is to, of course, monitor radioactivity levels and make sure no contaminated material is leaving the reserve. It's essentially like a quarantine zone because they don't want any irradiated stuff finding its way into non-irradiated areas. So they monitor things, take readings, and conduct patrols to make sure no one is trespassing or illegally removing like radioactive fish or anything. But on top of that, while they're at it, the reserve is used as a way of studying the biology and ecology of the area in response to the Chernobyl disaster, to find out what the plants and animals and fungi and microbes are doing in response to being blitzed with radiation. And this is the part you might have heard of where people say nature is thriving around Chernobyl. To an extent, this is true. I mean, this is a place where humans have vacated more than half a million acres. Of course, plants and animals are going to recolonize 
this area. We see this in other areas around the world that humans no longer inhabit. Humans leave, nature returns. And this is evidenced by the fact that the Polacy State Radio Ecological Reserve is now home to wolves, European bison, endangered Jowalskis, Jowalskis horses? Bears, lynx, moose. Also, pause here, side note, Europeans, do you call moose elk? Because I was very confused when I was researching this and saw a picture of a moose labeled as an elk. Let me know in the comments down below if this is the case. Overall though, the reserve is home to about 77% of Belarus's known mammal species, all of its reptile species, 70% of its amphibian species, nearly 70% of its bird species, and more than half of its known plant species, including 49 species that are endangered. This is actually on par with the biodiversity seen in other Belarusian protected areas, but we have to distinguish between the presence of these species, meaning they are just physically found within the reserve's borders, and the fitness of these species, meaning are they healthy? And on that front, the evidence is not so great. A growing body of studies suggests an increase in mutation rates, cancer, and sterility in some areas, reduced growth rates in trees, an increased prevalence of cataracts in rodents and birds, as well as a reduction in brain size among birds. And this makes sense when you think about it. Radiation and life on Earth are generally incompatible, so it's no surprise we're seeing adverse impacts on plant and wildlife populations. Now, it's important to keep in mind here too that contamination in the reserve is not uniform. It's more of a patchwork with some areas being more or less irradiated. Most of the research conducted deals with areas that are heavily contaminated, and so areas that are not as contaminated could have healthier populations. We don't know. It's another thing that this reserve is valuable for studying. So while it is true that this area is rewilding, I think it's a bit of a stretch to say nature is thriving here. We just need more info and data and time to figure out the true long-term impacts to wildlife and plant populations here. All right. Now let's talk about forest fires, because the managers of Polacy State Radio Ecological Reserve play a big role in preventing them within its boundaries, and for good reason. See, when the Chernobyl disaster happened, much of the radioactive material that was emitted ended up falling on and then ended up being taken up by forests. The reserve is about 50% forested, but some estimates say that up to 90% of the radiation was absorbed by trees in the area. So, like with carbon storage, the forests of this radioecological reserve are holding onto a lot of radioactive material. And just like when large forest fires erupt in other areas and release large amounts of carbon into the air, when large forest fires erupt near Chernobyl, they release large amounts of radioactive material into the air. And in some ways, it can even be worse because that radioactive material is now more widely distributed than coming from a single source. When large forest fires erupted in this area in April 2020, radiation levels in Kyiv measured 16 times higher than normal, and elevated levels were detected as far away as Norway. So there's a pretty big incentive to manage forest fires in the reserve, and this kind of actually acts like a self-reinforcing protection mechanism. The job of the reserve is to monitor and contain radioactivity so it doesn't spread to non-radioactive areas, and forest fires break that containment. So managing forest fires prevents the release of radioactive material but also further nourishes the rewilding already taking place here. All right, now there's another piece to this puzzle when it comes to managing this reserve, and it's probably the most controversial. It has to do with the economic output of the reserve. Belarus is a very agrarian nation, and when this land was removed from agricultural production, the land was no longer able to be put to work and thus not able to be profited from. As I mentioned, contamination in the reserve is not uniform. There are areas with less contamination within its borders. The Belarusian government claims these areas are safe for agricultural and economic production and have taken to logging in them, growing cereals, raising horses and honeybees, and recently offering tourist experiences. They claim to conduct extensive radiation checks and that all products are sufficiently safe, but it is hard to tell whether or not this is actually the case. You'll find mixed reactions to this part of the reserve's management depending on where you look. So that is the Polacy State Radio Ecological Reserve in Belarus. 
one of the most unique and different protected places I've ever come across. I mean, it was never intended to be protected in the first place. You had thousands of families here living a normal, everyday life. Then, in the blink of an eye, their lives were upended and their land irradiated. In its wake, the disaster left an ecological laboratory, an accidental park inextricably linked with the tragedy and suffering which birthed it. That park is now monitored, both to ensure the disaster grows no further, but also to observe, to understand nature's response to an unnatural event. In this way, the Polesi State Radio Ecological Reserve is both a memorial to the past of the people who lived here and a harbinger of the future. This has been National Park Diaries. Thanks for watching. I tell stories from the world's protected places here, in this case, Belarus. If you want to see more stories from protected places around the world, then you can subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell thing so you don't miss an episode. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support what I'm doing here further. This channel is entirely fan funded and I couldn't do it without the support of my patrons. You can get up to three extra videos a month over there, plus access to my Discord. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.